Tens of thousands of people are expected to participate in a pro-Israel demonstration in the nation's capital today. The March for Israel rally comes just more than a month after the beginning of the war, of course. Attendees include members of Jewish organizations, U.S. lawmakers, and relatives of the hostages still being held by Hamas. CBS News correspondent Christina Rafini joins us now from Washington, D.C. Christina, good to see you. Uh, talk to us about who was attending the rally, what went into planning it. It's a pretty diverse group expected here today, and that's because this was organized by a coalition of Jewish groups from across the country. And New York, there's also groups from Miami. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty big crowd. The permit was for 60,000 people. Now, the crowd size they're expecting, and the entire National Mall on this side has kind of been walled off. Security is, of course, very high for, for obvious reasons, and one of them is the people that are expected here. Both the minority and majority leader of the House, uh, Israeli president, is expected to be here, as well as celebrities you might know, like Deborah Messing and folks like that. The rally has three stated purposes. It's on our credentials here. It says to march for Israel to free hostages and against anti-Semitism. Now, first of all, there isn't actually a march. Everyone is staying here. The other thing is, is today those are being presented as a single cause. But there are other groups that have taken each of those separately. And so uh, part of what the mission seems to be here today is to tie that all together as, you know, freeing the hostages, fighting anti-Semitism, and supporting the state of Israel are all one issue. And uh, that's that's not something that's universally felt, even by communities, communities who have been supportive of, of the Jewish cause in other places. And, Christina, I understand that you've been talking to some folks on the ground. Um, what, are, what are people telling you about why they're there, people who might have family members uh, who are among those hostages? We did just speak to 29-year-old Gal, whose brother Guy was with him at the music festival. He says he didn't want to go. His mother asked him to go to keep an eye on his little brother. And when the terrorists struck, they both jumped in separate cars and tried to get out. But because of the chaos, he couldn't find his brother. He said he got out of his car and looked behind him, and he wasn't there. And then for the next eight hours, he was running for his life. He said Hamas released a hostage video of his brother, which his parents and the rest of the world saw before he was in a position where he could call home and talk to his parents. So his parents and other people in the world knew his brother had been taken hostage before he did. Uh, and we talked to him just a little while ago. I think we have some sound for you guys. You can say that I'm more shocked than anything. Um, I was shocked for almost two weeks until I started doing anything for my brother because it was too hard to, to, to even start to process what happened. And right now we have only one mission, which is to make sure people understand that the hostages that have been taken, they, are not, uh, they should not be a currency in this world, you know. These people, they went into a spiritual festival to celebrate life, peace and love. My brother, his is, is, is only language that he knows is peace and love. And that's what we speak, that's what we know at home. You know, and I also asked him if he's concerned that the military action or what's going on could compromise his brother. And I asked him, how does this end? Where does he see this all going? And he said, look, he's, he's not a political expert. The only thing he can focus on right now is doing what he can to bring his brother home. Obviously, his parents are incredibly distressed. It's been very hard for these families. They haven't heard anything of or from his brother since the initial video when he was taken hostage. So it's a lot of unknown. And like you said, he wants to make sure in all of this that the hostages are not forgotten, that they're not used as currency in the conflict. Certainly, and not just in the U.S. There is a march from, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, family members of other hostages demanding that the government prioritize the release over, of the hostages over any diplomatic or, or military interests. Christina, thank you so much.